So welcome back. In this part here, we want to kind of connect up the notion of the null space and the column space with what's going on with linear transformations. So remember that we have a linear transformation, which is a map from Rn to Rm. And we can define certain uh, things coming from this linear transformation, namely the kernel of the trans linear transformation and the range of the linear transformation. Now the kernel of the linear transformation is defined to be all the acts in Rn such that when you plug them into your linear transformation, they get sent to zero. And so this is a subset of Rn. And then the range is the set of all outputs you get as you vary in the inputs from Rn. So the range is all the things that would end up on the R side Rm. Okay, so I've drawn a picture here to kind of hopefully help us illustrate what's going on. We have an Rn on the left side and an Rm on the right side. And the kernel, I'll draw it as red, Let's say that this is the kernel. Okay, so this will be the kernel of a T of T. And what that means is that if you were to take any point on this red line, it will get mapped over to the vector zero. So everything here gets mapped in red, it gets mapped to there. On the other hand, the range of T, it will include the zero vector. Let's see if I can draw this here. There we go because zero is going to be definitely in the range, but it could be bigger. And this would be the range of T over here. And what that means is if you take any point over here, it ends up somewhere on the blue line. So everything inside of Rn gets mapped over to the blue line. So maybe I'll just add a little bit more detail here. So everything in red goes to zero. And over here, what I want to illustrate is everything in Rn ends on the blue line. Now, it could obviously be much bigger. It could have filled up all of Rm. But the idea is you're kind of dividing up the kernel, which is sending all the things over onto this side. And then the range is where everything is ending up on the other side. Okay. So we know, and hopefully this is a point that you've picked up as we're going along, is that whenever you have a linear transformation, there's really a matrix hiding in the background, namely the standard matrix. So whenever you have a linear transformation, you can find a matrix A such that plugging in the X is the same thing as multiplying the X by A. So here we have a nice result is that if you look at the kernel of this map, okay, and so it's by definition, this is all the things, um, oops, let me rephrase this. This is all the X such that when you plug X into your function, you get zero, but this is the same thing as multiplying uh, X by A and getting sent to zero, but that's exactly the same thing as saying the null space of A. So you can talk about the kernel of your linear transformation, or you can talk about the null space of your matrix, but they're really the same space. And similarly, the range is defined to be all the values of the form Tx, which is the same thing as all output of the form Ax as we let x run through Rn. And we saw this earlier that this is simply the column space of A. So the range and the kernel are precisely connected to the column space and the null space. And we can say a little bit more now from, by using this language. So remember when we have a linear transformation, it's still a function. And functions can have the property of being either one-to-one -one or onto. And we can now describe the property of being one-to-one -one or onto in terms of the column space, uh, in terms of the corresponding uh, subspace. So let me write out this more precisely. So T is one-to-one -one means that 
a x equals zero has only the trivial solution, which is another thing of saying that the null space is as small as you can get. Okay, so it has to be equal to zero. And on the other hand, t is onto. So if you look at my picture here, it were, if this was onto, we would have filled up all of our m. So that means that we would have that the range range of t, which is equal to the column space of a, is equal to our m. And that's an m there. And another way of saying that is just saying that the column to a, the column to a span r m. So if you're trying to decide whether your function t is one to one or onto, you can actually look at either the column space or the null space to determine that information. So that's all I wanted to say about uh, the connection between these subspaces in linear transformation. In the last part of today's lecture, we're going to introduce linearly independent sets, and we'll look at kind of a, uh, a substantial example.